It's Tuesday, March 17th, 2020. So more continued volatility in these markets. Dow Jones up over a thousand points today. After we had a limit up last night, then this morning, Dow Jones was under 20,000 points, then surges over a thousand, clo closing up at 1,048. And this is all while economic activity is literally come to a standstill here in the United States of America. And as I'm watching businesses all over my area now, shutting down restaurants, casinos, uh, stores, gyms, you name it, everything is closing down in my area. And I'm sure that most of, of your areas are closing down also. And I find it interesting that the entire US economy basically has come to a standstill yet the Dow Jones is up 1,048 points today. What we know for a fact right now is the massive stimulus is on its way. Most of you predicted that. We all knew what was next, right? What, what else can they do? We're at 0% interest rates. It's gonna be a flood of money, massive stimulus, bailouts, and negative rates coming to America. And you know, for every action, there is a reaction. You wanna flood? the United States economy with massive amounts of money printing, you're going to get massive amounts of inflation. We are going to have a lot of money, a lot of cash in this economy chasing very few products and very few services. And people don't understand the amount of debt that this is create, creating. The massive debt bubbles are getting even bigger as this whole market is collapsing. And so, you know, the only thing that I see happening is a massive collapse. This to me is getting so dangerous. There's no going back where we're at. We've never been to this point ever, and there's no going back. There is gonna be so much damage when these bubbles blow up, when this market comes down. This Fed is completely lost. They're in huge trouble. They are losing control. Get ready for the massive stimulus, the massive inflation, um, and negative rates. The savers will be punished. The little guy, the mom and pop stores are not gonna get bailed out. Big corporate America will. And this is just, it's really sad to see what, it, what is happening to America. This economy in this country is being destroyed. You know, if you think people aren't worried, um, just, just read a little bit, do your due diligence and homework, go to your local bank. People are pulling money out of the bank. Uh, the people that at least have money in the bank, you know, half, half of this country doesn't even have four or $500 saved up. Uh, you know, I see banks in New York and Manhattan, uh, Hampton area, wealthier areas. Those people are pulling money out of the bank because they have a lot of money in the bank. Uh, in other areas, uh, the banks are quiet because most people don't have any money in the bank because they don't have any money to begin with. One of my buddies went into a bank and he just said, there was nobody in there. And think about that. When 44% of this country doesn't even have $400 saved up, why would they even be at the bank? I mean, half the country literally has zero savings. Uh, I got a couple articles here on CNBC. Uh, I'm gonna go over them with you. Uh, this one titled, Trump Seeks Stimulus Package Potentially Worth More than $1 trillion, including direct payments to American Americans. And I was watching some of the press conference today and Steve Mnuchin came out and he just, he said, look, we're gonna, we're gonna you know, keep the restaurants open, the fast food restaurants, we're gonna keep those open so that you can go through the drive-thru. You can even use your app, make an order, pull right up, get your food and drive right off. Like it's that easy. Like Steve Mnuchin is gonna go to Taco Bell for lunch today or McDonald's. You know, the way they treat people like little peasants, throwing everybody some crumbs. You know, we're gonna throw you $1,000 and keep the, the fast food restaurants open, the, the, the drive throughs open for you so you can use your little app and go pick up a Big Mac. Unbelievable. But let's look at some of the stimulus right now. They're talking about 500 to $550 billion of direct payments or tax cuts, 200 to 300 billion in small business assistance, and 50 to 100 billion dollars in airline and industry relief. Now, 
you know, I'm all for helping small business and helping helping people. There's no doubt about that. Everybody's going to need some help here. But when we look at like Delta Airlines, we look at American Southwest and United, they collectively uh, spent close to $40 billion with corporate buybacks over the last five years. Do these companies not have any cash reserves? They used it all on buybacks to prop up their stocks. Y you know, how many of these companies on Wall Street are broke? I mean, we've got zombie companies. 40% of the companies on Wall Street don't even make a profit, and they're all going to want bailouts. And they spent all their money on corporate buybacks to jack up the, the price of stocks in this Ponzi scheme illusion that people call the stock market. So these airlines have absolutely no reserves. So the first thing they do is go straight to the U.S. government and ask for a handout. And I think that that's absolutely wrong, that the American people should be on the hook for these banks, for these airlines, for car companies. Everybody's going to want a bailout. And you and I are going to be on the hook to pay for it. Yet, look at how they jacked up prices of everything. Airlines, they sit you in, in, in an airline seat and you have no room. You pay an exuberant amount of money, get terrible service. Um, you know, it, it's, just, it's just horrible. Here's another one on CNBC. Fed says it, it, uh, it will offer an additional $500 billion in overnight repo funding. That was um, today. That's what they, they did last night. $1.5 trillion last week. They're doing this to calm liquidity disruptions. And again, again, where's all the money at? How come uh, the airlines don't have any money? How come the banks have a liquidity crisis? They, they apparently have no money, no cash, and now they need repo injections on a nightly basis. Remember, this was only going to be temporary. We go back uh, to Monday, the Fed announced announces another $500 billion op in operation for overnight repo funding. That's on CNBC. That was on Monday. So we've got 500 billion on Monday, 500 billion um, on Tuesday. And people really believe that the stock market's real, that the banking system is healthy. They believe that the U.S. consumer is strong. Give me a break. Nobody, you know, we talk about having an emergency fund, having something put away. You know, you talk about water and food and assets and cash and having something put away. It seems like Wall Street and these corporations have nothing put away. The airlines certainly don't. The banks are broke. And this is why people who are, are savvy are running to their bank and getting all their money out of it because they don't trust what is going on. The government wants to start sending millions of Americans a check. Here's how to use it wisely. This was an article also on CNBC today. I guess now we have uni universal basic income coming to America. Uh, this is to make you a debt slave if you're not one already. People are broke. They have no savings. And this makes people very dependent on the government. And the more dependent you are on the government, the more of a debt slave you're going to be. The best thing you can do is detach out of the system, detach from the banks, detach from what the government is trying to do here, and that is to make you a debt slave. And the more dependent you are on anything, the more of a slave you're going, going to be to it. So that's why I just believe in being an independent, free-thinking human being, being self-reliant. And look, it's not that we don't need government. Of course we do. But there are so many people, the masses, millions of people dependent on the government just to eat for money now to save them because when you're broke, you have no uh, reserves, no cushion, no secure, no, no insurance to fall back on. So people are forced to be reliant on the government. And that's, I think, a very dangerous thing. Zero hedge today, Port of Los Angeles, container volume plummets, most since financial crisis. Um, this is going to be another problem. When the shortages arrive here to America, um, I don't think that's more than two or three, maybe four weeks away before people really notice that the Targets, the Walmarts, there are shortages. People are not going to get... Uh, the things that they got a month or two ago at the store. And now that we're seeing these buying frenzies because people are getting very scared because they didn't take the time to prepare, 
uh, people, you know, are just acting like uh, animals, ripping everything off the shelves. And people are going to be panic buying because they know uh, that maybe next month it's not going to be available. So they may buy more than they need just in case you can't get it next week or next month. Yahoo.com. Second quarter GDP could plunge 10%. So market is up over a thousand points today. We're looking at GDP in the second quarter possibly plunging 10%. Market up a thousand points because of massive stimulus. Look, the whole thing is fake. How can the market be up when literally a majority of businesses now are just shutting down across the country? People are getting laid off left and right. Look, I have family members who have lost their jobs. I'm sure you know somebody or, uh, yourself uh, that might have lost a job in your family or, or a friend, some acquaintance. Uh, everybody now knows somebody who's getting laid off. I got a phone call this morning from a good friend of mine and uh, he works uh, at a store and they closed it down indefinitely. So now uh, you can go get unemployment, but unemployment is not going to cover most people's uh, overhead. And so you don't know if you're going back to work next week, two weeks, a month from now, two months from now. People have car payments. They've got credit card payments. They've got uh, insurance payments, health care payments, uh, house payments, rent. This is going to get very, very ugly. Wall Street Journal today, another problem for the Fed. Banks pressured as clients scramble for cash. Look, right now, cash is king. But I think people who are sitting on a lot of cash um, are going to be in for a big surprise when they see that that cash is going to be buying a lot less uh, day after day after day. If you're sitting on a pile of cash right now, and I think cash is very important, but I think hard assets are even more important. The cash you're sitting on today is going to be worth a lot less next year. I can guarantee you that. Massive inflation is coming to America. They're going to make sure of it. Casinos ask Congress for emergency aid as infection toll sweeps industry. So not only do we have the airlines wanting a bailout, We've got casinos wanting a bailout. We're going to see insurance companies that need bailouts. Um, we're going to see banks, cruise ship, uh, uh, the cruise ship industry, small business, big business, individuals. Everybody is going to need a bailout. And how do you keep bailing everything out when you're broke? This country is $23.4 trillion in debt. Imagine the amount of debt we are going to create here with bailing everybody and everything out. I mean, again, for every action, there's a reaction. It's going to be massive inflation, and it's going to be the devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Really scary stuff. Uh, Los Angeles Times, L.A. County releasing some inmates from jail to combat this infection. So again, we talk on a daily basis about security. They're letting prisoners out now, releasing prisoners in LA County because of this infection. So, so now you don't just have the, 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 the threat of this infection, the threat of this collapsing economy. Now you have the threat of what uh, is walking around uh, on your local streets because the state just said, uh, let them go. Again, security, number one asset. Earlier today, I was reading a, a few articles and I jotted down a few notes and I wanted to uh, go over them with you as the Dow Jones closes up 1,048 points today. And anybody that believes that this is real, they, they need psychological help. Here's where we're at right now. We have zero growth in America. Everything is at a halt. We are now in a global recession. The, U the U.S., as I've said for a long time, is in a recession. And I think anybody that doesn't believe America is in a recession right now, they have some issues that they need to deal with because this country is in a recession and it is about ready to head into a depression. We're shutting down stores, restaurants, casinos, major events, sporting events, conventions, you name it. All these people now won't get a paycheck. 
half of Americans don't even have $500 in savings. They will not cover next month's rent, their next car payment, their living expenses, and things are going to get much worse. People are going to be in very, very big trouble. And that, that should concern every one of us. You, you know, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I love this country. I love the people of this country. And I don't want to see people suffer, especially people in my country. And unfortunately, we are past the point of no return. We are going to see a lot of suffering here in America. And if you think you're seeing a lot of homeless people on the streets right now, you haven't seen anything yet. Um, we're going to start seeing a lot more homeless people. You know, in many of my videos, uh, we always talk about, and all of you know, that 80% of this country lives paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth. And when you live like that, there is a, a, a risk that if something big happens, you're going to be in very, very big trouble. You know, if, you're, if you don't have that cushion, if you don't have that emergency fund, if something happens, you miss a day of work, you miss a week of work, now people are going to miss an indefinite amount of work. And being one paycheck away from trouble, now they're going to be multiple paychecks away. And they're going to be in big trouble. So we're going to see lots of people moving back in with their parents, moving back in with family members. And there's a lot of people out there that don't have family. And where are they going to go? They're going to be sleeping in their cars or they're going to be out on the streets. That's what's going to happen. And that's just the facts. As the economy slows, crisis will start to cascade through many industries. And the problems are going to hit harder and they're going to hit faster. And this is why... It's been so imperative to be preparing to have something to fall back on because what if you don't go to work for a week, two weeks, four weeks, eight weeks? Do you have the, the resources and the funds to last? And there are people out there that do, and there are millions and millions of people that don't. And we're going to see a lot of destruction here. So no matter how big the stimulus is, no matter how big the bailouts are, uh, if they bring TARP back, if they flood this whole thing with $2 trillion of stimulus, whatever they do, here's my question. We are a country that is a service sector-based economy. We do not make anything. How do we pay this back? Um, how do we prevent this from happening again? I, apparently, we did not learn our lesson after 2008. We've had many years now to bring manufacturing back to America to make things right here, to have something to fall back on, uh, to, to make a manufacturing-based economy. But we didn't do that. We have a service sector-based economy filled with Uber and Lyft drivers. And I do not see how we can be a world superpower when 70% of our GDP is, is service sector, when we have an economy based on consumption. If we are not making things... How are we going to work our way out of this debt? And now we've got massive debt coming. Massive debt coming on top of the 23.3, 23.4 trillion dollars of debt. The massive deficits, the unfunded social security, the unfunded pensions. We have so much debt here. How we are not going to pay it off with a country uh, full of full of Uber and Lyft drivers and people working at Starbucks and just people being in the service sector. China's in a really bad uh, situation, no doubt about it. But when the dust settles, they're going to turn the factories back on and they're going to start making a lot of stuff. And you know who I think is going to benefit from all this? I think it's going to be China because the whole global system is collapsing. And it's basically going to be a reset of the system. The countries who have the gold and the countries who make things, who, ha who, manufacturing th who manufacture things, who have the factories, who have the infrastructure, these are the countries that are going to be the next world superpowers. And that world superpower, unfortunately, may be the communist regime, China. Because this whole thing's collapsing right here in the U.S., and when it settles, how do we 
get back up on our feet? How do we restore ourselves? How do we reset with Uber and Lyft drivers and coffee makers at Starbucks? Because it's a service sector economy. This really is scary because everybody is basically going to collapse. The whole global system is collapsing. And the countries, again, who make things, who have the infrastructure, who have the gold, these are the countries who are going to rise up out of the ashes and be the world superpowers. Not a service sector economy. Not an, uh, an economy based on consumption. Not an, uh, a, a country of obesity, laziness, dependency. I don't want to see this country fail. And I hope and I pray that something is done, that something prevents this from happening. Because we are going to have a very, very hard time getting back up on our feet when this whole thing collapses. Look, they can prop this market up all they want. The economy is collapsing. People are hurting, they're suffering, and they're going to be hurting a lot more next week, the week after that, next month, they are going to be hurting. And people are going to be so far behind the eight ball, so uh, underneath this debt that they're going to have a hard time ever recovering. You can't drive enough Lyft in, in Uber. You can't make enough coffees at Starbucks to get out of this kind of debt. I mean, Pete, the average American is going to get annihilated with what is happening right now. And they're going to send you a thousand dollar check. You think that's really going to help? They're going to give you some crumbs while they bail out all the big corporations. The big industries are going to get billions and billions of dollars and you're going to get a thousand bucks. Prepare for what's coming right now. I know most of you have been. Continue preparing because it's going to get real bad here in America. And if you're not prepared for this, you're going to be in for a real nightmare. God bless you.